Hey everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in. I hope everybody's having <coughs> a great weekend, man. Compared to how the weekend started and even this morning with rain, uh, the sun is out. Typical Houston weather. Uh, give it enough time and it definitely will change. And I mean within the day. But anyway, look, I am here to talk to you about something that I've been talking about for a while and it seems to be getting increasingly worse. Uh, this gender war, this natural, almost instinctive vitriol that is being spewed and, and pushed and the narratives that are being manipulated and generated by certain people on social media backed by certain power structures and I just want to share with you something that I experienced firsthand which is simply a microcosm of a much bigger issue and before I do don't forget to hit the like button share button and subscribe button that is if you find what you are seeing and hearing to be of any benefit to you in whatever way for those of you who are seriously committed and have been following me for any stretch of time you know the work we do in the community you know the research that I have conducted over the last 30 years and uh, how I've used that research to create programs and interactive uh, interventions within the inner city and the black community we need your support. Look in the description box and see how you can give and give. It's real simple. We can't do it without support. Okay, now, I've been talking about this whole gender war, this, this almost instinctive hatred between black men and black women. It's the black man's fault if you're a black woman. It's the black woman's fault if you're a black man. No sense of culpability, no sense of accountability, no sense of reason and rational rationale, no ability to see the people outside of the uh, context of the framing that's actually pulling the strings and creating this uh, division between us. But I'm in this group on Facebook and I don't like being in groups. But there are some groups worth being in. You know, some that lighten the day, you know, a couple of sports groups, talk it on, talk about sports and go back and forth. And I don't normally contribute, but I read and I watch and every now and then I drop a one-liner uh, and keep going. And then there's this group called the uh, Black Fitness Group. And it's made up of people who look like me uh, male and female who are going through different stages of their journeys of fitness, wholeness, wellness, uh, people who have had unbelievable transformation and weight loss, body sculpting, and everybody's encouraging everybody. It's a beautiful thing. And some people, if you're on there long enough, you get to know because they post frequent, frequently and they are inspired. It's a great place to be. Well, yesterday, uh, a, a guy who I'm not familiar with in the group posted something in meme form with nothing but words, but just simply said, there's somewhere out there, there's a woman who is hurt or frustrated because some guy rejected her. Just know that there's a guy out there for you who will love you as you are and cherish you. And within minutes, he was under assault. Um, he was accused of being egotistical because how egotistical of him to believe that a woman's need to be attractiveness, be attractive has anything whatsoever to do with a man. And on and on, and it just piled on and piled on. And so I responded, and I responded the way Rick responds. I respond as a person that uh, values uh, lucidity, uh, and clarity. I don't leave things to be interpreted. So I don't do, when it comes to something of this significance, I don't do one-liners, two-liners. I go in and explain exactly where I'm coming from and I address a number of different issue that, issues that concern me. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I get what you're saying when you say that your self-worth and your self-esteem and your value isn't in whether or not a man receives you or finds you attractive or not. And that's 100% true. It shouldn't be. Neither should a man's uh, value or worth be in being approved, validated, uh, uh, any of those things by a woman or anyone else for that matter. You should have an internal gauge 
that values who you are in this world by what you're contributing to this world and how you see yourself. Your self-image, your self-esteem, your self-concept uh, are all connected. And what you need to understand is how you see yourself, is how you perform in this life, what you do, what you are willing to tolerate, what you are willing or to demand, and, and everything else in between. So I get that. I'm not arguing that part. What I am saying is it's actually egotistical for a woman to sit up and jump on that man that way. Because now you're assuming that only he was only talking to women or that you are the only type of woman that's there. There are women who want to attract men. There are women who want to be more attractive to attract men. This isn't about whether they are that, uh, uh, justified in that desire. They exist. He's speaking to that woman. He's not speaking to the woman who feels like that a man has no place in her world or that he, he he's insignificant. And what I posted was this idea that because I am self-sufficient in my worthiness of a human as a human being and my worth as a human being means that I have no natural need to attract the opposite sex is not historical correct it's not biologically correct it is not socially natural and what I meant when I said that was every species on this planet has a natural built-in innate need to attract the opposite sex. That's how you project the species. That's how the species survives through procreation. The natural need to a set to sexually attract someone of the opposite sex. It's natural. So when you convince yourself that something that is inherently genetically, neurobiologically imprinted into your DNA isn't natural, you now have an emotional conflict between the natural and what you are trying to develop in way of a social construct. I get it. You don't want to be valued of uh, uh, you don't want your valuation to be based on what somebody thinks of you, and it should not. But the idea that somebody paying you a compliment is somehow offensive is absolutely ludicrous. Now, he didn't say in any way that you need to be validated by this. It was just, hey, I'm lifting for the sisters out there that's going through it. I'm lifting you up. And it's, it's immediately taken as offense because there's this own growing thing. And brothers, because I'm focusing on this one thing, it does not mean that I don't mean and talk and, and that I'm not directing this at you too. This whole idea that everything a woman does is in some way a slight on manhood. Don't get me wrong. There are some women out there that are moving in what they believe to be masculine energy, which is actually a pseudo- uh, representation of masculinity because she can't project any more masculinity that, that she has and the masculinity she has is reserved for certain specific emergency measures and is not truly present all the time. What she's doing in way of that is mimicking masculinity and she is presenting it and it comes across as hard because she is functioning outside of the design. But in no way do you get to get up, sit up, and excuse yourself from your responsibility, my brothers, by sitting up pointing to what she's doing as if she's supposed to be the lead, it's as if she's supposed to be the head, if she's supposed to be the one who is responsible. If you want headship, if you want leadership, if you want to be referred to as a king, that comes with a certain level of responsibility, it comes with a certain level of saying that you know what? Even though I see that you're out of line, there's a way that I'm going to move. There's a way that I'm going to carry myself. There's a way that I'm going to operate, not based off of who you are, but based off of my character. It goes to the same premise. I'm not behaving based off of what you think of me. I'm not behaving off the way you treat me. I'm behaving based off of who I am. Now, there may be a time based on who I am that I have to separate myself from you because you are not treating me with the respect I deserve. But I will never, ever use the way you, you, you look at me or view me as a means of measuring myself. But I will demand a certain thing and I will execute a certain level of behavior no matter who I'm dealing with. I don't treat a woman how she moves. I treat a woman how I carry myself. Now, if I treat a woman with a certain level of respect, I'm expecting her to carry herself in a certain way. Now, if I'm treating you with respect and I see that you lack the ability to move in a certain way, I stop dealing with you. 
And I'm not talking about romantically. I'm talking about period. I'm going to give every black woman I come across. I don't care what she looks like, what she wearing, whatever. I'm going to talk to her a certain way. I'm going to open the door for her, treat her way. But obviously, if she doesn't know how to respond to that, if that can't bring, what will happen is a lot of times my softness towards her will soften her up. But if she is just ingrained in a space with th that she's going to be hard, she'll eventually find herself in that space by herself. Uh, I'll avoid her, whether it's, at, at, if, whether it's the clerk at the uh, restaurant, whether it's somebody in the grocery store, whether it is. I will just simply move, move away from her space where I don't have to encounter her because I don't want her energy conflicting with the energy that I'm creating. But what I will not do is look at her and say that she's less than me because she's moving a certain way, that she doesn't deserve my respect, my my covering or whatever it is that I'm gonna give in that brief moment that I'm encountering her because of what I see her in or what I see her saying. No, I'm going to move in a way that says, this is what a man looks like. This is what a man acts like. This is how a man behaves. And if you've got me in a place where I'm looking at top calling you out of your name or referring to you in a way that's derogatory, number one is I'm out of character, I'm out of line, but you have gotten to a point to where you don't even deserve to be in my space and I will step away from you, but I will not treat you in a level that uh, is uh, conviction on my character. But what I'm looking at is we don't know how to receive love. This is this wasn't even about an attack, though. This is about a brother sitting up and, and, and sharing something that women took offensive because it came from a man. Again, I get what you're saying when you say my value isn't tied into what somebody thinks of me and it isn't and it should not be. But the idea that a woman doesn't need to attract a man isn't natural. It's something that's being pushed by funk, by fake, faux uh, relationship gurus, by people who are literally looking to create a chasm between black men and black women. The idea that there, there is no need to attract, that's a part of the natural process. There are also endorphins and neurotransmitters that are released when we are moving in a way, even when a woman is moving to attract a man, there are endorphins. When a man is preparing himself, uh, gearing himself, whether he's in the gym, or whether he's putting on that cologne, or whether he's putting on that certain shirt that let, that falls a certain way on him, there's endorphins and neurotransmitters that are released then. And then when a woman actually compliments him on that shirt or on that cologne, there's more endorphins. These endorphins serve to... Uh, provide a, a feeling of well-being, a, a feeling of affirmation. It's a part of our fulfillment process. When we don't get these things, when we don't get these affirmations, when we don't get these things, it eats at us. We can tell ourselves we don't need it. We can tell ourselves, I don't care if nobody likes me. Well, the problem is somebody needs to like you. That needs to be a sense of affirmation. Now, the thing is, you don't have to beg anybody to like you. You don't have to beg anybody to find you attractive. You find you tried. But when someone is trying to pay you a compliment, there's no offense in that compliment. Now, if a person ever say, you know, you look pretty good, you know, to be thick, or you look pretty good, you know, to be whatever, you know, so that, that, that big one, you know, you look good for a dark person. And to me, ain't nothing more beautiful than dark skin. But again, you know, not uh, for you, for y'all light skin women start on me. I then, you know, got kid by light skin women, that's all I'm going to say been married to a light-skinned woman so i just love black women you know but what i am trying to say is and hear me very clearly you can't you can't you can't outperform the science and what i mean by that is you can tell yourself what all these gurus are telling you that you don't need a man uh that 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 you don't need a woman and you you can take all that stuff but neurobiologically your body is demanding something and you can feel it with all these other things thinking that's going to happen you can you can you can become overindulgent which is in itself egotistical which i thought was uh, actually ironic that they were accusing this guy of being in his ego for actually giving a compliment when the very response to the comp compliment was highly egotistical it was very self-consumed uh but 
again, people don't think, uh, rationalize or search things for meaning. They do they do it predominantly with emotion. And when we, as long as we keep doing that, we're going to constantly be manipulated, misguided, misled, and turned against one another. I'm not saying that we don't have problems. I'm not saying that there are some things we definitely need to work on. What I'm saying is you can't build anything of any true value off of instinctive, offensive uh, ideology where if a man says it to me, I don't care if it's positive or negative, it's offensive. How dare he have a right to think he can speak anything into my life? And that's actually one of the jobs of a man is to speak. He becomes a prophet, not in the sense of being able to see the future, but being able to speak power, life, and elevation into the lives of the people he loves. And when a man is trying to do that and a woman is dismissing it and seeing it as being offensive and looking down on it, it is a destructive response. No matter how much you want to stand on it and what you want to do, the science just doesn't match. We are designed to attract one another. It's that simple. You can talk to you blue in the face. You can say what you want. And what you're going to find is we're going to create an entire culture that hates each other so much that we're going to disappear off this freaking planet. On that note, I'm out of here.